All right, here's our review video for Unit 1, Atomic Concepts. All right, so the first thing we have to remember are the different models of the atom. So first we're going to talk about Dalton's model. He said that elements are made of or from atoms. And he said that all elements of, sorry, all atoms of an element are identical. And we know that's not the case now, but that was Dalton's model. And he hypothesized that compounds are formed from combinations of atoms. Next important thing we have to talk about is Rutherford's gold foil experiment. Rutherford's gold foil experiment. Zoom in a little here for us. He bombarded gold foil with alpha particles. Okay, so if here's our gold foil bombarded with alpha particles, most went straight through. Some were deflected and a few were deflected almost straight back. So what did this tell us? Two important things to remember. One, the atom is mostly empty space. Next thing is that it has a, so we'll say width, a small, dense, positively charged nucleus. And this then led eventually to the Bohr model, which was a small, that the atom is a small, dense, positively charged nucleus. surrounded by electrons in circular orbits. This is also known as a planetary model. Our modern day theory, the wave mechanical model, very similar to the Bohr model. Okay? The only difference, so it's a small, dense, positively charged nucleus surrounded by electrons. The only difference is that the electrons are in orbitals, okay? which make up the electron cloud. An orbital is the area where electrons are most likely to be found. Okay, so that was the models of the atom. Alright, so the parts of the atom. We have protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, so they're called also nucleons. They're in the nucleus. And the electrons are in orbitals around the nucleus. Mass. Protons and neutrons each have a mass of 1 amu 
atomic mass unit. Electrons are basically zero. It's one over 1,000 something or other. It doesn't really matter. We pretty much treat electrons as they have no mass. Charge. Protons have a charge of plus one. Neutrons are neutral. They have zero charge. And electrons have a charge of minus one. The protons and the electrons are equal but opposite in charge. Now in an atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. The pluses and the minuses cancel each other out and to make a neutral atom. Okay. Now, electrons. Even though we don't subscribe to the uh, Bohr model, it's a really good model for drawing how atoms work. So in an atom, we have the positive nucleus with the protons and neutrons, and then the electrons surrounding it. And the location of the electrons is going to determine how much energy they have. All right, so surrounding the nucleus are electrons, and uh, electrons are going to be in specific energy levels. So I'm going to draw here a hydrogen atom. It's going to have one electron in the first energy level. And its electron configuration is simply one. Now what can happen is if energy is put into the atom, the electron can jump up to a higher energy level as it absorbs energy, jumps to a higher energy level, then eventually pretty quickly actually, it falls back down to its ground state. Okay? So, electron sitting at ground state, put in energy, it jumps up to an excited state, a higher energy level, and it falls back down to ground state, and it gives off that energy as a photon of light. Well, let's say we do lithium. Lithium has two electrons in the first shell or energy level and it has one electron in the second. So its electron configuration is two, one. And let's say that we throw a bunch of energy at this lithium and an electron absorbs it and jumps up to a higher energy level or an excited state. Now there's one in the first shell and two electrons in the second shell. So this 2,1 is the ground state, electron configuration for lithium. 1-2 would be N, because there can be more than one, excited state, electron configuration. And then this electron falls back down to the first energy level, and energy is given off as a photon of light. Now, so you can look at this through a spectroscope. and you'll get a bright line spectrum. It's kind of like a fingerprint to tell you what element you're looking at. Of The bright line spectrum is the wavelengths of energy that's released while the, when the electrons fall back to their ground state. Okay. Valence electrons. are the electrons in the outermost shell. These are the electrons involved in chemical reactions and bonding. Atoms with a full valence shell are stable. So hydrogen and helium, okay, since there's only one shell, they're seeking two valence electrons. Helium has a full valence shell with two. Other than that, the rest of the noble gases 
have eight valence electrons, and that's who everybody, that's what everybody's seeking to have. They're seeking those eight valence electrons. Can use uh, Lewis structures to show that. Right? So here's a Lewis structure for helium. Right? Lithium has then one valence electron. Uh, neon has eight valence electrons. Oxygen has six. Now when we draw fewer than eight, the first two valence electrons are going to go up top and the others spread out. Three, four, five. Now they can't spread out anymore so then they start doubling up. So oxygen has six valence electrons and it's correctly drawn like so. Okay. Next. Atoms of the same element have the same number of protons, which is the atomic number. The atomic mass is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So if you want to calculate the number of neutrons, that's equal to the atomic mass minus the atomic number. All right, almost done. Last thing we're going to talk about are isotopes. Definition of an isotope, it's the same element, so it has the same number of protons, different number of neutrons. And finally, the atomic mass you see on the periodic table is the average atomic mass, which is a weighted average of an elements naturally occurring isotopes. All right, that's the end of Unit 1 review, and I'll see you guys in school.